nearly 250 years, visitors have been coming to this property and the history of the Greenbrier is an amazing story with more twists and turns than a West Virginia mountain road. Today we have with us Dr. Bob Conti, the Greenbrier historian who's done an amazing job documenting and keeping the history of the Greenbrier alive. Dr. Conti, thank you so much for being here today. Hi Jennifer, pleased to meet you. Yes, it's so nice to meet you too. <laughs> So, Dr. Conti, what first drew visitors here to this property, and how has it evolved from then to now? Well, right behind us, uh, under that spring house, is the White Sulphur Spring. That explains the origin of this resort. When we say people have been coming here since 1778, that's what they were going to. Okay. So they were going up to the springs, they would have said, to take the waters, drink or bathe in the water, to restore their health. Like the spas of Europe, you know, we were continuing a tradition that goes back thousands of years in Europe. So with the resort the way it is, what, what has kept, in your opinion, the most uniqueness of the Greenbrier alive? Well, simply that we've been here so long that we start out almost 250 years ago, and this is still right in the middle of the resort. People all the time go back and forth from the hotel to the golf club. They're walking right by the spring. We've maintained a lot of the cottages. You know, the resort develops pretty much from here uh, towards where the hotel is today. There are cottages on the hill right behind us here that go back to the 1830s. You know, this is one of the most historic properties in America. And it has that unique history that a lot of people don't know about. So can you highlight some of the yeah. history <laughs> that's around the property, in the property? You, you know, sometimes I think of this 19th century history as the invisible history. Uh, people, people think the Greenbrier, we're going to the Greenbrier. Well, when the Greenbrier was built in 1913, we'd already been here for 100 years. There was 100 years of, uh, of a history of this is the great, the great southern summer social resort. People coming up here to take the waters. Uh, it was only open in the summer in the 19th century. It's cooler up here, up in the mountains. Uh, we're at 2,000 feet. And this lawn surrounding us here was the great social gathering spot. So all sorts of important people from throughout the country were up here talking business, talking politics, talking marriage. This was sort of a romantic resort, maybe something of a marriage mart throughout the 19th century. So it starts out of the cottages, many of which are still here. There was a hotel before the Greenbrier, the, the old white, uh, uh, that stood right next to the current hotel. And this evolved into a very large resort. This is actually a bigger resort. We could accommodate more people 135 years ago uh, than we do today. So in the early days, how did people get to this property? Well, back before the Civil War, we're talking stagecoach. Long trip, three days from Washington, D.C. And you know, one of the most important things that ever happened in the history of the Greenbrier is that they built a railroad right across the street. And that happened in 1870, right after the Civil War. And then for a hundred years, everybody comes here by, by rail. And that helps explain why the old Chesapeake and Ohio Railway bought this property in 1910. And then they built the Greenbrier that people think of today. What they did if the central part of the property where we are right now was already here, they built on both sides. So they start building the Greenbrier Hotel in 1913. And then in 1914, right over here, uh, they build a golf course. They build the old white course. And that's pretty much the lay of the land today. The hotel's way bigger. There's more golf. There's more tennis. But the basic footprint of the property is a big hotel, big lawn surrounded by cottages, uh, sports facilities. That's pretty much been in place for uh, 100 years now. And then the railroad's going to own it for, uh, uh, for 99 years. And boy, those years back before the Second World War, that was really the, the, the heyday of rail passenger service, people coming here from New York and Philadelphia and Detroit and Chicago. I mean, Joseph and Rose Kennedy honeymooned here in 1914, get on a train in Boston, get off right across the street. And then golf, of course, is a big, a big issue back then, a major draw. Charles Blair McDonald designs the old white course. Sam Sneed becomes the pro here in the late 1930s and really for a whole generation of golfers, if you say the Green Bar, they say Sam Sneed. If you say Sam Sneed, they say the Green Bar. I mean, really, I can't overstate how important Sam Sneed's long connection to the Green Bar has been. So with the history of this place, it was not always a resort. Right, there was a break. In the Second World War, uh -huh. uh, the Green Bar was first used to intern enemy alien diplomats, Japanese, uh, German, and Italian diplomats for six months at the beginning of the war. And then it served as an army hospital for four years. For, for four years, this wasn't the Greenbrier. This was Ashford General Hospital. So it was a 2,000 bed hospital in 
almost 25,000 soldiers were admitted and treated here. Uh, Had to feel good. Period, uh, for four years. So the railroad actually sold the green bar to the army. The army used it for four years. Uh, and then they, then they sold it back to the railroad in 1946. That's how Dorothy Draper enters the story. So for many people, the green bar is Dorothy Draper. And the reason she came here was the building had taken a beating. You know, there was a war going on. They didn't maintain it as a luxury resort. Uh, and so it needed to be redecorated uh, after the army left. So she arrives in 1946 and spends almost two years totally redoing the entire hotel, the public areas, the cottages. We, we were draperized, as they used to say there back in the, in the 1940s. And that company still decorates the green bar. It's, sort of, it's remarkable that there's been one company, two people, that have decorated the green bar and all the cottages and the employees' uniforms and the china for over uh, 70 years now. So the Green Bar reopens in 1948. Uh, Sam Snead is at his peak as the golf pro. The Duke and Duchess of Windsor you know, are coming here. It's a very cosmopolitan period there in the, in the 1950s. And then the government comes back in the late 50s with an interesting proposal. How's about we build a bunker on your property? Uh, and to some degree, I think that sort of follows the fact that there had been an army hospital. There had been a relationship during the Second World War. So the government started this, something called the Continuity of Government program, and they needed a facility to move Congress. They were going to move Congress from Washington to this emergency relocation center, uh, which they built here at the Greenbrier, 1959, 1960, and 1961. And uh, this was part of a larger program, uh, uh, assuming there was some sort of war, a Cold War, with the, uh, the Cold War turns hot with the Soviet Union. And then for 30 years, from 1962 to 1992, the Greenbrier was quite literally a resort with a secret mission, uh, with one phone call from the right person in the government to the right person at the railroad that owned the Greenbrier, the whole Greenbrier would have turned over to government, uh, 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 government occupation, and they would have moved Congress down here and continued to function as the legislative branch of the federal government. So in 2009, for the first time in 100 years, the Greenbrier received new ownership. So how has it changed since then? Yes, really, a whole, a whole new era begins. You know, we've been corporately owned for all that time, and you know, now one individual owns it and has a chance to stamp his uh, personality on it. Well, the very first thing he did was, was uh, build that casino. You know, he bought it in May of 2009, and by August of 2009, we're having a ceremony out front digging the first uh, shovel pole. Mr. Justice likes to get things done. And uh, they built that casino in 10 months, and, uh, which is a remarkable, remarkable uh, period of time, 100,000 square feet. So really, uh, since Mr. Justice bought it, that's, I think, the single most uh, dramatic change uh, uh, that's added not only the casino, uh, but the shops down there and the restaurants down there. Uh, and, and then, of course, since then, he's built the chapel, this wonderful chapel right next to where we're sitting uh, back in 2015. You know, this has always been a sort of a romantic resort, so it really, it really kind of plays on that. Uh, people used to honeymoon here, now they get married here. I guess they get married and honeymoon here. So the beautiful chapel was built uh, in 2015, the same year as a new tennis facility right behind us here, uh, center court at, uh, at Creekside. Uh, the sports performance center across the street where we've, we've hosted the New Orleans Saints and the Houston, Texas doing their the summer camps here during, uh, uh, during July and August. Uh, and then the Green Bar Classic, that golf tournament that went on for a good 10 years, it really focused a great light on, the, on not only on the Green Bar, but on the whole state of West Virginia. Wow. Well, I know we could sit here and talk for hours, if right. not days, about your experience personally, as well as just the history of this beautiful place. Dr. Conti, if people want to look up more information, where do they go for that? Well, there's an extraordinarily well-written book called The History of the Greenbrier. That I would certainly suggest that you might do that. Actually, I do a Facebook uh, page called the, uh, the Greenbrier History Group. Uh, when they get here, we do tours all the time. Certainly not only tours of the bunker, but tours of, uh, tours of the ground. And there's a lot of information to learn uh, to truly appreciate the Greenbrier, and we're happy to share it uh, any chance we get. We know that our word is only as good as our energy. 
Not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy, and our energy is boundless. It's good to have options when choosing health coverage for yourself, for your family, or for your employees. And you've got options with the health plan known for exceptional service and support with a nationwide network of physicians, flexible coverage options you can count on and competitive rates you'll appreciate. The health plan. Plan on it. Learn more at healthplan.org. It all started in 1778 when visitors first came to these beautiful hills to drink and bathe in the natural spring water that flows through the valley. From tents around the spring came cottages and eventually an 11,000 acre resort complete with a world class spa using those same waters, incredible golf, award winning cuisine and impeccable hospitality. Over the years, the Green Bar has welcomed presidents, royalty, and the world's top athletes. It has hosted the Ryder Cup, NBA and NFL training camps, top-level boxing, and the PGA Tour. This weekend, America's Resort writes a new chapter as basketball is played inside iconic Colonial Hall for the first time. The inaugural Battle for the Spring House welcomes eight teams from every corner of the state to the Green Bar to learn about its history, make lasting memories off the court, and compete for the very first Spring House trophy. We appreciate you joining us live here on the Green Bar Valley Channel, where every game of the Battle for the Spring House, sponsored by Appalachian Power, will be broadcast from the opening tip to the final horn. Enjoy the game as we send you courtside for all the action. Some way, somehow, we won the game. I kept thinking I'm going to hold one defense for the end of the game, and we did, and we switched. And the coach, you know, we just couldn't quite catch up to that. You know, the Green Bay Spartans and the Bridgeport Indians in the battle for the Springhouse Basketball Tournament. And every play tonight, Green Bay will be the home team, and the Bridgeport Indians will be the guests. It's time now to meet the starting line of Bridge team, and we'll begin with the Bridgeport Indians. Under the direction of head coach Herman Pearson, please welcome our team to play. Number one, Gabby Reed. <laughs> Sophomore number two, Maddie Evans. <laughs> A junior number five, Bailey Thomas. <laughs> Sophomore number 14, Emily Anderson. <laughs> and please welcome the junior number 15, Brittany Ford. All right, now it's time to meet the starting lineup for the Green Bay Spartans. Under the direction of head coach Jim Justice, please welcome a senior, number three, Allie Dunford. A junior, number five, Candace Stewart. <laughs> Senior, number 25, Brooke Davis. <laughs> A senior, number 32, Daisha Summers. <laughs> and with one of the sophomore, number 33, Layla Pence. <laughs> That's the total of the three third Spartans. J-R-O-T-C. Performing the anthem from, Green Bar from the Green Bar Entertainers, we are pleased to welcome Josh Attenberg. So gallantly streaming 
for the spring house here at the Greenbrier as Greenbrier East and Bridgeport both break their uh, huddles, receiving final instructions from their respective coaches, and they take the floor. Greenbrier East going right to left on your radio dial to start things off, right to left uh, from your vantage point if you are watching and joining us live on the video stream on video production, or excuse me, on the Greenbrier Valley channel. The ball is tipped in the air and controlled by Bridgeport. We are underway. Gabby Reap goes to work. Reap. Greenbury falls back in that 2-3 zone. Reap, a huge reason why the uh, why Bridgeport is in this championship game. Down, down to Emily Anderson, the other reason. Up top again to Reap. She dribble drives inside, kicks out, shot is up. Short, pulled in by Allie Dumford. Greenbrier East, the home team, wearing white jerseys. Over to Caden Stewart on the right side wing. Up top into the half circle to Deja Summers. Kicked out to Davis. Wide open three. Too much mustard on it. It is saved by Bridgeport, who then promptly throws the ball away. A big, big time rebound for the Lady Indians, and they end up giving the ball right back to the Lady Spartans as Brooke Davis inbounds from the sideline. Good to have the Greenbury East High School pep band here with us, Timmy, providing a little entertainment. And uh, when you have your own band, you can get to your fight song when the game starts. Deja Summers gets a shot from inside the paint off the assist by Summer or by Davis, excuse me. The shot wouldn't go, however. And here is Bridgeport on the move. Maddie Amick with the ball, right side wing, up top again to Gabby Reap. That's who the offense flows through. Down to Emily Anderson, who's blocked. Shot is blocked by Deja Summers out of bounds. And Emily Anderson, that's the other player to watch for, too, the forward for Bridgeport. She had quite an impressive matchup against Martinsburg yesterday in the opening round. Yeah, she had a great game. See how uh, her game stacks up against Deja Summers, who will be defending her a lot of the time. A shot from Anderson from right baseline. Misses wildly. Greenbrier East comes away with the rebound. We're scoreless here. We've played a minute of this championship game to determine the battle for the spring house in the girls' division. We thank you so much for being with us here at the Greenbrier. Wherever you may be, however you may be listening or watching as Allie Dufford sends the ball into the right corner to Brooke Davis. Bounce pass Deja Summers. Shot is up for Summers. That misses. Ball is deflected out of bounds. And Greenbrier East will keep possession after it was knocked out of bounds, deflected off of Bridgeport's Reagan Moore. A little bit of a slow start offensively. Both teams, each team has taken three shots. Nothing going into the hoop yet. But there's a lot of tension uh, in the air, Cam. I mean, this is a true championship atmosphere as Bridgeport steals the ball off of the inbound. It was poked loose and eventually stolen by Maddie Amick, but then Kane Stewart knocks the ball loose and stolen right back. Here's Deja Summers on a fast break. She scores. Yeah, Timmy, you mentioned that atmosphere. I love the fact that they, it, we have that tonight because Greenbrier Ice, quite frankly, didn't handle that well against Woodrose to see if they can do a better job tonight. Bridgeport in transition. A shot up for Emily Anderson. She draws the foul. From Layla Pence, the shot won't go. That puts Emily Anderson to the free throw line with 6.14 to go in the first quarter of this championship matchup to determine the battle for the Springhouse champion presented by Appalachian Power. Anderson makes the first, cuts the Greenbrier East lead to one. Second shot up coming for Anderson. That is up and in. Two of two at the, that trip for Anderson. We're all knotted up. Two apiece. Dumford over the timeline to Davis. Davis is guarded up quickly by Bailey Tomes. 
into Summers, down to Pence, back to Summers in the paint. Turnaround shot is up and in. Good to see Deja Summers' first four points for Greenberry. She's been struggling a little bit lately, especially offensively. Good to see her start fast. And we're going to have a Greenbrier East foul on Deja Summers. She picks up the foul. Greenbrier East was showing some full court pressure there. So Summers got a foul in the Bridgeport backcourt. Bounce pass uh, inbounded to Gabby Reap. Up the floor to Amick. Over the timeline to Anderson. Anderson gets to the line. That's an offensive foul. And Emily Anderson picks up her first foul. It's an offensive foul. She charged into the right block. Good job by Caden Stewart stepping in front, taking the charge there. And Dumford throws the ball away. Bridgeport comes away with the steal. They're in their own front court. East has to get back on defense. They do so. Gabby Reef with a deep three. She misses off the front iron. Rebound, corralled by Allie Dumford. Dumford over the timeline, up the floor. Caden Stewart pops a three in transition, and she drills it. Caden Stewart puts the Lady Spartans up 7-2. to two. Bridgeport's coaching staff beside itself there. Make that 9-2 to two as Summers scores off the steal. And this is the Green Brace team we saw early in the season, this dynamic duo of Summers and Stewart starting early for the Spartans. And going to have a timeout, I believe. And she stepped out of bounds. Oh, it's, that's right. Well, th- the court is so big, you think you've got so much extra room, you really do have to pay attention to the lines out here. This is an NBA-sized court. It's been taped specifically for high school WVSSAC regulations, so Bridgeport certainly uh, got caught there. Greenbrier East in on offense here. Here's Caden Stewart in the left corner. Shot fake in from the left baseline. Misses the shot. It's out of bounds. Deflected out of bounds by Layla Pence. Bridgeport takes control. We're at the 448 mark of quarter number one. Greenbrier East ahead in this championship game, 9-2. to two. Greenbrier East tried to set up his pressure. A little too slow on it there. Anderson to Moore. It's a two-on-one and a travel. Bridgeport had Greenbrier East right where they wanted on that exchange, but Reagan Moore took one too many steps, and the Lady Indians were unable to execute. East gets the ball back. They've got a seven-point lead. Summers moving quickly into two defenders. Gets a layup shot from the right side that won't go. Bridgeport with the rebound. Here's Reap over the timeline. Into the front court, guarded tightly by Caden Stewart. Over to Maddie Amick on the right side wing. Up top again to Reap. Deep in outer space three. She drills it. We saw that yesterday, Timmy. You can't give her any room no matter where she is on the court. She'll pull the trigger in a hurry. Reap from deep pulls Bridgeport to within four. And Deja Summers going the other way, draws the foul. She'll get to the free throw line. Green Brace has handled this pressure from Bridgeport well. They've gone right through it without a, out of any trouble. And Deja Summers has attacked the basket. And that foul goes on Reagan Moore for the Lady Indians. Deja Summers is good at the free throw line. Pushes Green Briar's lead out to five. It's 10-5. And, you know, you add to that atmosphere, too. Uh, the last time these two teams played in a meaningful championship game, it was the state championship back in the 2012-2013 season that uh, Greenbrier East prevailed in, as he uh, talked about during the uh, pregame interview. It uh, got Coach Justice uh, his first state championship. Yeah, what a game that was. I remember being uh, home in Aiken, South Carolina, listening to our buddy Travis Jones call that one for Metro News. Sure, that hurt him that night. <laughs> he did a foul. I texted him after the, 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 the game. Bridgeport homer that he is. I texted him after the game. He did a fantastic job. You wouldn't have known. He's a true pro. As are you, Cam. I don't Gre- know. Gre- Greenbrier East inbounds to Deja Summers. They have a six-point lead. It's 11-5. to five. If I was doing a Greenbrier East championship game on the radio for uh, statewide, I'm not sure I'd be that unbiased, Demi. I'll be honest. Summers loses the ball out of bounds off of her knee. And Bridgeport takes control. We're just inside the halfway mark of quarter number one. It's a two-possession game here in the first quarter of the championship game in the girls' division of the Battle for the Spring House here in the fabled Greenbrier Resort. Here's Reap. She's got range over to Amick. Top of the key. She pulls up a three. That's Amick. Misses short. Offensive rebound. That's Reap. She misses the putback. Rebound deflected off of Anderson into the hands of Allie Dumford. Dumford looking up the floor. She's on the right wing, right elbow, into the paint. Kick out to Stewart. Stewart with a travel before she takes off. She just got a little, her feet got a little too happy there before she it's a Bridgeport. made the drive. Bridgeport takes possession here with 3.30 to go in the first. 
And here's Reap. Over to the left side to Tomes. Left side wing. Up top now to Amick. Another three from the top, and she drills it. Yeah, Green Bar East that time, Timmy, I think was in a uh, kind of a one-man man against Reap in a four-man zone. But Amick makes them pay from deep. Summers in transition up the floor to Davis. She loses the ball. Summers saves it. Up top to Dumford with reset. Dumford into the right block. She draws the foul going to the basket. That foul will be called on Reagan Moore. And that will put Allie Dumper to the free throw line. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Three. And they're going to say that was on the floor, I guess. Really? That that close beneath, underneath the basket? Maybe a chance for Coach Justice to get part of his five and a half points off inbounds play. No question. Dumford to Summers. Just missed the shot. You can hear the groan of the crowd. How did that shot not go in? Caden Stewart picks up the foul as Bridgeport goes the other way. Yeah, they ran that play to perfection. You heard Coach Justice over here saying, wait on it, wait on it. It took a little while to develop, and then Deja Summers was wide open, just couldn't finish it. Here's Reap over to Amick, left side wing. She can shoot it from there. Into the elbow to Alwyn Knapp. Back out to Amick. She launches a three. Misses. Nice rebound by Brooke Davis. East ahead, 11-8, to eight, two and a half minutes to go in the first. Over to Summers, left wing. She penetrates into two defenders. Loses the pumpkin. It's picked up by Bridgeport. Stolen by Tomes up the floor to Reap. Reap driving the length of the floor. She gets a shot up. Nice defense by Brooke Davis. Over to Anderson. Anderson misses the shot. Gets away with a travel. The ball's on the floor, and Allie Dumford is tied up. As I look over that Greenbury's defense again, Timmy, I was wrong about it. They have actually a two-man man. They're, they got a man on Reap and on Anderson, the two big scorers for Bridgeport in the zone, the other three spots. On the alternating possession arrow, Greenbrier East takes the ball off of the tie-up. Stewart inbounds to Dumford. Over to Davis, left side wing. Up top to Caden Stewart. See Taylor Boswell and Caroline Dawson both checked in here. Stewart goes to the hoop, gets a shot up, draws the foul. Shot won't go, but that's two free throws for Caden Stewart. Stewart is a phenomenal free throw shooter. That foul goes on Bridgeport's Maddie Emick. Timmy, I think that might be the next step in Stewart's game. We know how great of a basketball player she is. If she can get to the point where she can play through contact a little bit more and finish those and get the end one, that's the, uh, the next part of her development. Stewart good with the first shot. East ahead, 12 to eight, exactly two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Second shot in and out. Offensive rebound for Stewart. She gets her own rebound. Up to Dotson, over to Dumford, left side wing. Dumford dribbles inside between two defenders. Nice layup. Shot won't go. It's short. Rebound, Miley Smell of Bridgeport. And Davis with the steal, the shot, the foul, the bucket, the and one. Put Brooke Davis to the free throw line. That foul on Miley Smell. And what a job by Davis. Is She did exactly what I was saying about Caden Stewart. She played through some heavy contact there, got it up off the glass and scored it. See if, if Brooke Davis can complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way as the shot is up. That's it. 15 to 8. Come on, Caroline. He's showing pressure again. Bridgeport breaks the press. Anderson a left wing to Amick. Amick tried to kick back out to Anderson. The ball's deflected and stolen by Caden Stewart. Stewart on the run over the timeline. Left wing behind the back dribble into the paint. Kick out to Dumford. Dumford holds the ball, penetrates. Nice layup for Dumford. A burst of speed for Allie Dumford. She gets to the basket from the right side, puts the Lady Spartans up by nine. That's the old video game play. You hit the uh, speed burst and go right through the defense. She sure did. And here's Bridgeport on a fast break. That was Reap to Anderson. Anderson scores. It's 17 to 10. Bridgeport certainly can run. They can run the fast break in transition. Here's Davis around a screen set by Stewart. Davis gets to the rim. How about Brooke Davis the last couple times down? She's uh, taking it on her own. That's five points for the senior. Steal by Dumford over to Stewart. Three ball is good. 47 seconds to go. Greenbrier East has opened up a 12-point lead. Ball's loose. It was kicked. No call. Bridgeport saves it. Up to Tomes. Tomes shuffles her feet, no call, up top to Reap. Down low to 
I believe that was Amick. She missed the shot. Taylor Boswell with the rebound. It was Amick. Tried a little reverse there. Couldn't get it to fall. And Caden Stewart to Allie Dufford over the timeline with 19 seconds left. We can hold for the last shot here in the first quarter. Reap going to come out and apply some pressure, try to make a move a little bit. Over to Davis, right side wing, back to Dumford. Between the circles with nine seconds to go in this first quarter. Dumford to Stewart. She's open. She fires the shot. That's good. Exactly what you want to see is we have reached the end of our first quarter. After one in this championship basketball game, Greenbrier East leads Bridgeport 25 to 10. We'll be back after this. You're listening to the Battle for the Spring House presented by Appalachian Power on Rock 95 and the Greenbrier Valley Channel. Stay with us. Attention car owners. We know that our word is only as good as our energy. Not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy, and our energy is boundless. All on the campus of the Greenbrier, America's Resort. Our second quarter about to get underway. Greenbrier East ahead of Bridgeport, 25 to 10 in this deciding game to determine the championship in the inaugural Battle for the Spring House presented by Appalachian Power. Timmy, the halftime or the first quarter stats about as good as you could hope for for Greenbrier East. They shoot 56% from the field as we got a foul in there and a drive to the basket. But the Spartans shoot 56% from the field, 9 of 16. They're 3 of 4 from three-point range, 4 of 5 from the line. They scored 13 points off of 11 Bridgeport turnovers and win the uh, battle in the paint 12 to 2. So everything looking Greenbrier East way early on. Maddie Amick shooting two. She makes the first, that foul, assessed on Allie Dumford as Allie Dumford picks up the foul. And that puts Amick to the line, shooting two. She makes the first, misses the second. Brooke Davis, big rebound. And it's poked loose, and Bridgeport saves it and scores it. That's Miley Smell. Cuts the Greenbrier East lead to 12. It's 25 to 13. Stewart. To Dumford. Dumford over the timeline, near side left. Top of the key now is Dumford. She maintains her dribble, drifts to her right, holds the ball into the right elbow to Deja. She turns around, gets a shot up in the paint, misses the shot. The ball is knocked out of bounds, and Bridgeport will take possession. 7.20 to go in the second quarter. Greenbrier East ahead of Bridgeport, 25-13. to Smell. Looking for an outlet. Greenbrier East trying to set the trap. They do so, and that's a steal for Summers. Summers to Stewart. Stewart draws the foul in the half circle. And that foul is going to be on Bridgeport's Maddie Amick. Her second. And now we'll get to see the fifth team foul, I believe. We'll see what Coach Justice uh, reaches into the tool bag and pulls out here in the uh, inbounds play here from the left baseline. He should have two already, but uh, Deja missed that layup. Allie Dumford looking. Finds Caden Stewart left corner. She fires a three. Swish. Nothing but net for Caden Stewart. She puts the Lady Spartans back up by 15. A trap set once again. Bridgeport calls a timeout. We'll take it with them. Seven minutes to go in the second quarter. East ahead 28-13 to 13 in the Battle of the Spring House. Keep it right here. You're listening to the Battle for the Spring House here on Rock 95 and the Greenbrier Valley Channel. Stay with us. It's good to have options when choosing health coverage for yourself, for your family, or for your employees. And you've got options with the health plan. Known for exceptional service and support with a nationwide network of physicians, flexible coverage options you can count on. 
and competitive rates you'll appreciate. The Health Plan. Plan on it. Learn more at healthplan.org. Was forced to use a timeout as they were trapped in the backcourt. They're moving the ball quickly up the floor, and they score. That's Bailey Tomes with the score. They, they, good job of ball movement for Bridgeport, able to break that Spartan press. Now Greenbrier East in transition. Here's Caden Stewart going to work. She scores. What a first half Caden Stewart's having. That's five points here in the second quarter. That's 15 overall. She scored 30 last night. She's uh, on pace to top that tonight. Here's Emily Anderson with the ball for Bridgeport. She picks up her dribble on the right side wing. Kicks left to Tomes on the left wing. Extra pass. The shot is up. It's a three ball from the left corner for Miley Smell. Good minutes out of Smell this evening. And here comes Dumford going the other way with six minutes remaining in this second quarter. Dumford up top to Summers. Over to Stewart. Stewart dribbles inside the three-point line. Gets a shot up. Misses. Nice offensive rebound for Brooke Davis. Half circle to Pence, extra pass to Stewart in the right block. Kick out to Davis. She fires the three from the right side and drills it. The rim is looking double size for the Lady Spartans tonight as they uh, push their lead back out to 15. It's 33 to 18. Make that 20 as Gabby Reap scores with a runner in the paint. Nice play for Gabby Reap. That's a big three last time down for Brooke Davis, Timmy. We've seen her so close here in recent weeks to see him finally start falling. My goodness, athleticism on display for Caden Stewart. She parted the Red Sea there through two defenders from the left side, as you can see the replay here on the uh, Greenbrier Valley Channel feed. But Greenbrier East back up by 15, 35 to 20 at the five-minute mark. And Stewart steals the ball on the defensive end, getting it done both ways. Out to Deja Summers. Summers up the floor. She gets a shot up, draws the foul, but that'll put Deja Summers to the charity stripe. Yeah, good thing Summers drew the contact there. She wasn't going to be stopped. It didn't matter what got in front of her. She was going to the rim. And that's Aowen Knapp picking up the foul for the Lady Indians. Deja Summers, an opportunity to expand this lead even farther for the Lady Spartans. First shot is up and in. Give Summers nine. That matches her total from yesterday. You have her with nine, Brooke Davis with eight, and Caden Stewart with 17 points. I mean, my goodness. What what a game that uh, trio is having here in the outset as Summers is good from the free throw line. I believe that puts her in double figures. It does. And Greenbrier East is out to a 17-point lead. As Brooke Davis nearly gets another steal. Bridgeport's able to get back. Good job running the fast break for the Lady Indians. That is Emily Anderson with the bucket. Lead cut back to 15. Here's Stewart between the circles. Running the offense here. Kicking left to Dumford. Dumford wants to get on the action. Her three ball is tipped, but the ball is rebounded by Layla Pence. Back out to Dumford. Shot is up. Missed. And a rebound for Greenbrier. He's a put back for Brooke Davis. Draws contact. Brooke Davis will shoot two. And that is Miley Smell with the foul for Bridgeport. Her second. 4.26 to go in the second quarter. And that's the seventh team foul against Bridgeport, so Green Brace will be shooting the rest of the half. Her shot is up too strong for Davis off the back iron as Caroline Dotson and Taylor Boswell will get ready to check in here. Boswell has a shooter, I believe. She'll get Brooke Davis. Come on, Brooke, hit this fight. Brooke Davis with eight points already here in this first half. Make it nine. Davis a point away from double figures. She's a point away from being the third Lady Spartan in double figures here tonight. East ahead 38 to 22 in this championship game of the Battle for the Spring House here at the Greenbrier. It has been a phenomenal tournament, and this game has a great atmosphere to close it up. Deja Summers with a steal at midcourt. She's sprinting down the floor. It's a two-on-one. Summers misses a shot. Nice rebound for Taylor Boswell. She pulls the ball out up top to Stewart. Stewart dribbles around the elbow, gets a shot up and in. That's 19 points for Caden Stewart. And Herman Pearson wants a timeout. We'll take it with him. 4.01 to go in the second quarter. Greenbrier East leads Bridgeport 40-22. to This is the championship edition of the Battle for the Springhouse. Here at the Greenbrier, you're listening to Lady Spartan Basketball on 
WRLB 95.3 and the Greenbrier Valley Channel. Stay with us. I know that our word is only as good as our energy. Not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy, and our energy is boundless. We have played a quarter and a half of this championship game, and Greenbrier East is already sitting at 40 points. I think that's certainly an indication of how well things have been going so far for the Lady Spartans. They have an 18-point lead over Bridgeport in this championship game, so we have a foul on the floor. Deja Summers picks up her second foul with 3.51 to go in the second quarter. And Timmy, you know, I think we were, we didn't even talk about it. I think we were thinking about the same thing. That's just what I was looking up. Greenbrier East's highest point total of the season is 86 points in a win over Bluefield. They're well ahead of that pace right now. Summers with the steal. She's all alone. Can she finish? Yes. The Lady Spartans take a 20-point lead. You can tell that the, the Lady Spartans and Coach Jim Justice really want that first-ever Springhouse trophy. Here's Reap dribbling to the basket. She gets a shot up going to the rim. Nice move to the basket for Gabby Reap. She'll shoot two. And, Timmy, that's uh, just another uh, example of the type of coach Coach Justice is. is uh, we um, we heard, heard him tell us about it, and we heard some of it with our own ears. He was pretty tough on his team after that loss to Woodrow Wilson. has really challenged them, and, and they've responded. So he... he Layla Pence picks up her third foul. Gabby Reap misses the first shot. That's going to bring in Liz Wooding for the first time tonight. Liz got the start last night against uh, against Nitro, and I thought she played really well to open the contest. You know, she was a big she part did. of that 7-2 run Green Briar started with as Reap makes the second shot. And, uh, you know, young players like her and uh, some of the other Caroline Dotson on this team, and I had a chance to see that uh, Eastern Greenbrier team a couple weeks ago. The future of this program is bright. Caden Stewart is absolutely lethal from the three-point arc. She scores again. She puts the Lady Spartans up 45-23 to that time. Stewart from the right corner. She's been uh, hitting from all over the place, Cam. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that was right on cue while I was talking about that as Reap hits the runner in the lane. We'll have another Stewart next year as Kennedy will join this team, a fantastic player in eighth grade right now. Reap scores into the paint going the other way. Here's Deja Summers trying to get on the three party. She misses. Emily Anderson comes away with the rebound, and she's fouled by Deja Summers. And I believe that's Deja's third foul. It is. So Deja Summers picks up her third foul with 2.40 to go in the second. And that's the seventh team foul, so that's one and one for Bridgeport. So both teams will be shooting free throws the rest of the way here in this first half. Greenbrier East with a 20-point advantage. They lead Bridgeport 45-25 to with 2.40 to go in the second quarter. And, you know, I think it's a, you know, from you can only call what you see. Everything is going incredibly well for Greenbrier East. Uh, as the shot is missed, it's tipped in the air, and Bridgeport saves it, swatted right in the hands of Caden Stewart, though, who comes away with the steal. Stewart to Davis. Davis pump fakes a three-pointer, gets inside, throws up a runner from left, misses, gets around, rebound, kicks out to Caroline Dotson, but steps on the line in the process of doing so. That what I, the point I was going to make with 2.28 to go in the second quarter is I'm not, I'm not sure Bridgeport is really playing bad. I mean, they're kind of shell-shocked by this offensive explosion for, the, for Greenbrier East, but they're playing pretty well. East is just playing at a different level right now. Yeah, they really are making everything in those shots from – from people like this. Reap hits another runner. Shots from people like Brooke Davis that we've said for weeks that they're going to eventually start falling. They're falling tonight. Tonight's the night that uh, that we've been waiting on. And Deja Summers kind of coming out of her shell a little bit as well. Brooke Davis firing a three. Too much uh, strength on that one. It was uh, up and over, but deflected out of bounds by Bridgeport. So we're inside the two-minute mark of the second quarter. Greenbrier East ahead 45-27. to Brooke Davis to inbound. Up top to Wooding. 
Over to Stewart, left corner. She fires a three. Left wing, excuse me. She misses the shot. Deflected in the hands of Caroline Dotson, and Dotson travels. Yeah, that's the first shot as well as she's played. That's the first shot Stewart's rushed a little bit. She was closely guarded that time, t- tried to throw it over the hands of the defender. Couldn't get it to fall. So here's Reap into the backcourt, up and over the timeline to Anderson. It's a two-on-one, and that's a travel, and Anderson knew it. She didn't even have to turn around and face referee John Mills when she heard that whistle. She knew she did it and just gave the ball right back. Wooding to midcourt on the inbound to Dotson. Over to Boswell, left side wing. Up top now to Stewart. Stewart looks at the basket. Passing left to Davis. Davis dribbles right. Down to Boswell in the left corner. She works the baseline, throws up a runner too strong. Offense rebound for Stewart. Stewart scores, picking up the trash from the right side. 47-27, east on top, inside, 90 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Trying to answer is Reap. She does. She's good from the free throw line, 47-29. Give Reap 12. Now she's being overshadowed by a fantastic game from Stewart, but she's played really well herself. Stewart has the ball, right side wing. She hands off to a cutting Brooke Davis moving to the right. Now up top to Stewart again, over to Dotson, left side wing. She pump fakes into Wooding. Nice assist to Wooding as the Wooding scores. From the left block, just inside the paint, East back up by 20. That's some good, unselfish basketball as Dotson comes away with a steal. Over to the right wing to Stewart, and Stewart's fouled by Maddie Amick. I believe that was a frustration foul for Bridgeport. It was, and it was Amick's third foul. Not the way you want to pick up your third, is it? She just bumps into Kay and Stewart out there. And it's not who you want to put on the free throw line as Kay and Stewart shoots a one-and-one. No, not for sure not. I was just looking. Stewart up to 25 points now. I guess maybe it is where you want her because she's one of two from the line. Her percentages are much better of any other spot on the floor. Shot is up and in. 50 to 29. Greenbrier East with 50 points here in the first half, and Caden Stewart has 26 of it. Make it 27. It's 51 to 29. It's Bridgeport 29, Caden Stewart 27. Yeah, what a performance. I don't think we have a uh, tournament MVP here for the battle for the spring house, but if we did, I'm pretty sure I know where that hardware would end up. Cadence. Caden Stewart picks up the foul. I believe that is her, that's her second. second. And that's a one-and-one one situation for Bridgeport. That's going to bring Aubrey Glover off the bench. And that's Reap at the free throw line. She makes the first. Yeah, she's fun to watch play, isn't she, Timmy? Reap, she's a fantastic player. Absolutely. She had a, a fantastic performance against Martinsburg, and she's playing extremely well tonight. I believe that's 13 points for Reap now. Give her 14. To, no, she missed it. Broadcaster's jinx as Brooke Davis comes away with the rebound with 38 seconds left. And Coach Justice instructing Dumper to pull the ball to cross the timeline here with 30 seconds left over to Glover. Up top to Dumford. East with a 21-point lead with inside of 30 seconds to go in this first half. Bounce pass over to Davis. Cross court to Glover. Up top to Dumford. 15 seconds left. Coach Justice calls the play. It's an ISO as Dumford passes left to Davis. Davis cross court to Dotson. Dotson dribbles inside, gets a shot up, misses. Over to Pence. She misses. And we're going to have a foul on the floor with .8 seconds left in the second quarter, and Dumford picks up the foul. That's her second. Another one-on-one. And again, that's Gabby Reap at the free throw line. She's got 13 points tonight. First shot up coming for Reap. That misses. It's a one-and-one. Pence comes away with the rebound, and that is the end of our first half. We are a half away from deciding the first-ever girls' champion of the inaugural battle for the Springhouse at the half. Greenbrier East leads Bridgeport 51-30. to We invite you to stay tuned. When we come back, we'll break down this first half of action, get you ready for the second half. Stay with us. This is the Warner Music School halftime show 
here on 95.3 WRLB. This is the Battle for the Spring House on the Greenbrier Valley Channel. Stay with us. Know that our word is only as good as our energy. Not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy, and our energy is boundless. It's good to have options when choosing health coverage for yourself, for your family, or for your employees. And you've got options with the health plan. Known for exceptional service and support with a nationwide network of physicians, flexible coverage options you can count on, and competitive rates you'll appreciate. The Health Plan. Plan on it. Learn more at healthplan.org. Okay, so not every visitor at the Greenbrier is a golfer, although the Greenbrier Golf Academy can certainly fix that. And not every minute of the day has to be spent with a club in your hand. There are plenty of other activities to keep you busy. With more than 55 indoor and outdoor activities available to guests on a daily basis. If you're looking for another sport, how about tennis? Its history at the Greenbrier is just as rich as golf, dating back to the 1890s when guests would play on the lawns of Paradise Row Cottages, Bill Tilden, Francis Hunter, and Brian Grant all played here in the 1920s and 30s. And recent stars of the game who have served and volleyed at the Greenbrier include Pete Sampras, Andre Agassi, John McEnroe, Venus Williams, Serena Williams, and Maria Sharapova. With five hard true outdoor courts, five recently renovated Deco Turf indoor courts, and the 2,500-seat center court at Creekside Stadium, there are plenty of places to play. Private lessons and clinics can help perfect your game or give a beginner a solid foundation. There are also indoor pickleball courts for those interested in taking part in America's fastest growing sport. Also available at the Tennis and Fitness Center are strength training equipment and cardiovascular machines to help keep you in shape. Daily fitness classes and personalized training are also available. Croquet offers a lovely way to spend sunny afternoons with the entire family. The perfectly manicured croquet lawn is ideal for a leisurely outing or competitive tournament. It's also a superb activity for family reunions, wedding parties, business outings, or team building. If you're looking for a different type of adventure, try Kate's Mountain Adventures, located adjacent to the Candy Maker near the north entrance. There, you can book horseback rides, carriage rides, as well as sleigh rides in the winter. Fishing is also available through KMA, with various species of fish and different casting methods available. The Gun Club provides opportunities for skeet and trap shooting with certified instructors, while off-road driving options include Jeeps and Polaris RZRs. Polaris slingshots are also available for driving adventures on the mountain roads. Segway tours can be booked at Kate's Mountain Adventures, and they provide a unique way to explore the 11,000-acre property. Across the hall, you'll find the home base for the Venture Zone, offering full-day, half-day, and dinner programs for youth that are both educational and entertaining. Without leaving the building, you will be able to find bowling, an arcade, a historic indoor pool, two exciting escape rooms, and of course, the popular bunker tours, which take visitors through the secret Cold War bunker on property that was built for Congress in case of a national emergency. Outside the doors of the Greenbrier, plenty of other adventures await. Visit Greenbrier Outfitters across from the outdoor infinity pool to book once-in-a-lifetime experiences, such as an aerial adventure course, an alpine climbing tour, bike rentals, canopy tours, falconry, archery, axe throwing, paintball, and much more. Visit concierge or call reservations and make the most of your visit by booking your favorite activities today. The Mineral Spa isn't the only place on property where a rich tradition continues to grow each day. For more than a century, the Greenbrier has been synonymous with world-class golf. It all starts with the Old White Course, originally designed and constructed by Charles Blair McDonald in 1914. The Old White has stood the test of time and is still considered one of the finest courses in the United States, 
more than a century after welcoming its first golfers. The Meadows course began as a nine-hole course named Lakeside, designed by Alexander H. Finley. It opened for play in 1911, and in 1962, Lakeside was expanded to an 18-hole routing by architect Dick Wilson. The latest redesign came in 2017, and today's Meadows course features dynamic green complexes, breathtaking mountain vistas, and signature stacked sod bunkers. The Greenbrier course was built in 1924 by Seth Rayner and renovated in 1977 by Jack Nicklaus. In 1979, it hosted the Ryder Cup and in 1994 was the host to the Solheim Cup, making it the only resort course in the world to have hosted both prestigious events. Today, the course can be played at the nine-hole loop and all Nicklaus design elements remain in place. The newest golf offering at the Greenbrier, the Ashford Short Course, is a nine-hole walking course. It features designs from some of the most famous par three holes in golf and provides the perfect opportunity for golfers to perfect their short game or create friendly competitions. It's impossible to discuss golf at the Greenbrier without mentioning the legends who have walked the fairways, from Ben Hogan to Arnold Palmer, and from Tiger Woods to Justin Thomas. The courses at the Greenbrier have regularly welcomed the best in the game. The name most connected with golf at America's Resort is the PGA Tour's all-time wins leader, Sam Snead. The Virginian native was first hired as the assistant golf professional at the Greenbrier in 1936, and he kept a close connection with the resort until his death in 2002. Snead's pictures and memorabilia are prominently displayed throughout the golf club, and two restaurants are named in his honor. Tom Watson and Lee Trevino eventually followed in Snead's footsteps, holding the Golf Professional Emeritus title, and two-time Masters champion Bubba Watson is a regular visitor. Other golf greats who have visited include Walter Hagen, Gene Sarazen, Byron Nelson, Gary Player, Billy Casper, Bryson DeChambeau, Bill Campbell, Bill Nicholson, Dustin Johnson, Sergio Garcia, and Jordan Spieth. The courses have hosted celebrities outside of golf as well, including Dwight Eisenhower, Bob Hope, Lou Gehrig, Billy Graham, Richard Nixon, Jerry West, Bing Crosby, Shaquille O'Neal, Larry Fitzgerald, Denny Hamlin, and Drew Brees, just to name a few. Clearly, the Greenbrier has an important place in America's golf history. Enjoy the convenience of three courses in a practice area, all operating out of a single clubhouse. And don't miss your chance to be a part of the story. Book your tea time now. We know that our word is only as good as our energy. Not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy, and our energy is boundless. It's good to have options when choosing health coverage for yourself, for your family, or for your employees. And you've got options with the health plan known for exceptional service and support with a nationwide network of physicians, flexible coverage options you can count on and competitive rates you'll appreciate. The health plan plan on it. Learn more at healthplan.org. Since 1778, guests have come to these mountains to find beauty, relaxation, entertainment, and golf. Many have even chosen to call the Greenbrier home. With championship courses, culinary creations for every palate, and America's only private casino, the Greenbrier's legacy lives on. Plan your visit and experience why life at America's resort is life as few know it.
Back inside the fabled Colonial Hall inside America's Resort here on the Greenbrier Valley Channel and Rock 95. Timmy Gwynn came huffing along with you. Greenbrier East starts with the basketball. They'll be going left to right the rest of the game. They have a 21-point advantage over Bridgeport. They are two quarters away from claiming the first Springhouse Trophy. Coach Justice with a quick timeout. Timmy, you know things going well when you got Gary A. blasting out the Ursher up there. Yeah, that's a little outside of his bailiwick, and you know what? I'm here for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We, we can keep it right here, Timmy, during this quick 30-second timeout. But, uh, but uh, I don't know what Coach Justice saw that he didn't like there, but he came, certainly came out of the locker room all smiles. He, there's no way he could not like that first half. Uh, no question. I, I think he saw a different look that he, uh, than what he was anticipating coming out of the third quarter, so he called a, called a quick timeout eight seconds in the third period. But, yeah, what a – fantastic game that we have on hand here to close out what has been just such a tremendous tremendously successful tournament here at the Greenbrier as we look to close out the inaugural battle for the Springhouse. Yeah, make sure we want to congratulate Cavill Midland, our boys champion. Uh, they were impressive today. That's a complete basketball team. They defeated Wyoming East today after defeating Martinsburg yesterday to advance that championship game. So a couple big wins for Cabell Midland as Deja Summers launches a three and drills it. That's 15 points for Deja Summers. She gets the scoring started off. We've played 25 seconds of this third quarter. It's 54 to 30. Greenbrier East on top. And here's Reap. Not finding it easy being guarded by Brooke Davis. Arguably the best defender in the state in Class 4A as Maddie Amick scores. Come on now, what are you doing? And uh, Bridgeport loses the ball, excuse me, so Bridgeport, Greenbrier East will be forced to go the entire length of the court. Brooke Davis inbounds to midcourt to Deja Summers. Summers bounce pass up the floor to Dotson. Dotson misses the shot. Rebound pulled in by Bridgeport's Emily Anderson. Anderson's pass is deflected. It's stolen by Summers. Bounce pass again to, to Dotson. It's a give and go back to Summers, who scores from the left side. Greenbrier East ahead by 24 now. We've played a minute of this third quarter. And one thing we didn't min mention in our halftime stats is Deja Summers had four steals, and she adds another one to it there. Anderson half circle up top now to Reagan Moore. Moore dribbles left. Her pass is stripped by Stewart. Up the floor to Summers. Summers loses the pumpkin out of bounds. <laughs> Coach Justice tells Deja we got that on film, too. We sure do. <laughs> but I, I believe uh, what Coach Justice said off air to our statistician, nice hands. Um, may have applied there. All smiles all around. As Gabby Reap goes to work, she bobbles the ball. Feeling the pressure by Brooke Davis. Davis clapping her hands now. Davis moving her feet, staying in front of Reap. Reap dribbles inside, loses the ball. That's a cheap foul call. Did they get Brooke on that? No. Oh, they yeah, got Dumford. Dumford. That's our third. I honestly did not see any contact there. It, it looked like Reap just lost the ball. That said, you couldn't pay me enough money to be an official. <laughs> and Bridgeport keeps the ball. Here's Reap in the left corner. She inbounded to midcourt and then took the ball back in the left corner. She throws up a three from the left side, misses everything out of bounds, and that will be Greenbrier East ball. 6.08 to go in the third period. The Lady Spartans have a 24-point lead on their way to claiming the first-ever girls' division Springhouse trophy. Stewart dribbles behind her back at midcourt over to Summers' left side wing. Summers penetrates, kicks out to Dotson, extra pass to Dufford right wing. Pass over to Stewart, three from the top, and no good. Offensive rebound for Dumford, though. Bounce pass up top to Stewart. She pops a three and misses right. Emily Anderson with the rebound for Bridgeport. What is wrong with Caden Stewart? She's not supposed to miss this. Hey, we are going the other way. She's <laughs> got to get her feel for uh, the, the other rim as Reach will be fouled by Deja Summers, who bonks her head pretty good. That's four. That's on four Summers. fouls on Deja Summers. And, Timmy, I was going to mention a minute, a minute ago, you mentioned uh, going for the Springhouse Trophy. What a beautiful trophy it is, uh, designed and crafted right here by our, our carpenters at America's Resort. They've done a fantastic job with it. It's absolutely gorgeous, as has been the play of the Lady Spartans here in the first 
two and a half quarters as they have a 24-point lead over the Lady Indians of Bridgeport. Gabby Reap dribbles left. Bounce passes to Emily Anderson. Anderson scores. Nice inside out. The tandem of Reap and Anderson produces two points. It's 56-34, to 34, East on top. Stewart pushing the pace, sprinting up the floor. Kick out to Dotson. Shot is up and too strong off the back iron. Anderson corrals the basketball before it can go out of bounds from the right side. Over to Reap. Reap will bring the ball up the floor. Five minutes remaining in this third period. Over to Amick. Amick, bounce pass out to Tomes. Tomes takes a shot. It's a long two from the left side just inside the arc. Lead, lead for the Lady Spartans cut to 20. It's 56 to 36. Davis to Dumford. Dumford over the timeline. She's in a double team. Dribbles around it. Kicks out to Davis. Davis spins around. Gets in. Throws up a runner. Misses short. And Brooke Davis, or Bridgeport, uh, gets the rebound off of the Brooke Davis miss. We want to see Davis get at least one more point, get into double figures. Yeah, I think she missed an open Stewart on that one. Greenberry's in a straight man-to-man now. Reap kicks out to 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 woman more. Back to Reap. She dribbles inside, gets shot up, and that's an and one as she draws the foul on either Wooding or Davis. And that foul will go on Davis. The shot is good, and Gabby Reap is at the free throw line. Gabby Reap, what a great basketball player she is. Yeah, she's fantastic, and uh, we're seeing her score right there. But just a minute ago, we saw her vision as well. Great pass to get the assist. So she's a she's a complete all around player. I believe that was just the first foul for Brooke Davis. <laughs> yeah, I'm as shocked as you are. Taylor Boswell checks in for Elizabeth Wooding. Second shot for, well, the first shot, excuse me, is good for Reap as Reap completes the three point play the old fashioned way. And pulls Bridgeport to within 17. We're nearing the halfway mark of this third period. Off the inbound, Dumford's in a trap. She has to find help. She does so in the form of Caden Stewart. That's the kind of help you want as Stewart breaks the timeline. Over the right side wing to Dumford. Dumford pulls the ball out to the logo. Back to Stewart. Right wing. Shot is up. Won't go. Stewart still trying to find her stroke going the opposite end of the court. Bridgeport comes away with the basketball. Double drive kick out to Anderson. On the right wing, she pivots around into Miley Smell in the right corner. She dribbles, kicks out, shot is up. It's a long two that won't go for Anderson. Here's Stewart going the other way into two defenders. She stops, kicks out to Dumford. Dumford, shot fake. Three ball from the top. That won't go, but a nice offensive rebound for Taylor Boswell. Boswell kicks up top to Dotson, over to Dumford. Dumford fires the three from the right side. That won't go off the back iron here either. Ball is loose. It's knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Caden Stewart. Bridgeport takes possession here at the 315 mark of quarter number three. East ahead, 56 to 39. And East definitely cooling off shooting the basketball as Bridgeport has outscored the Lady Sparks 9 to 5 here so far in the third quarter. What a way to make a living. Yes, sir. Amick. I beg your pardon, Timmy. <laughs> Amick's passes. Picked off, stolen by Davis. She passes up the floor to Boswell. Boswell misses the shot. Dotson gets the rebound, misses the putback, but draws the foul. So Caroline Dotson will go to the free throw line off the foul by Miley Smell. Caroline looking for her first points of the basketball game. Dotson to push the Greenbrier East lead out. She does not on that particular free throw. Inside three minutes to go in the third period. Smell picked up her third foul there, too, Timmy. Second shot upcoming for Caroline Dotson. That deflects left. It's no good. Offensive rebound for Caden Stewart. Down to Dotson, left corner. Up to Caden Stewart, left wing. She penetrates, kicks back out to Dotson, who fires the three and drills it from the left corner. East up by 20 again. It's 59 to 39. 239 remaining in the third quarter. Nice shot for the freshman. Here's Anderson. Right elbow. She kicks out to Smell. Up top now to Tomes. Over to Reap. Left side wing guarded by Brooke Davis. Reap pulls the ball out between the circles. Dribbles to the right. Right elbow. Kick out to Tomes. Three balls up for Tomes. And that misses everything. Saved by Bridgeport. Up to Yowen uh, Knapp. 
who misses the shot. Rebound pulled in by Greenbrier East. Transition three for Caden Stewart. She misses offensive rebound for Dotson. Dotson's fouled on the putback. She'll go back to the line to shoot two more. And that's the fourth foul on Miley Smell. And Timmy, we I joked about it earlier. What's wrong with Caden? She's now missed four straight, so there might be something about that end of the floor. A little more solid backdrop with the solid orange behind it on the other end, this end, um, a little what? more open. And, and Dotson <laughs> misses a shot, and that brings Coach Justice out of his chair as that's three straight misses at the charity stripe for Caroline Dotson. It's worth mentioning, though, she made up for those uh, three free throws with a big three ball from the left corner. So she's at a net zero currently. And now she's one to the good as Dotson makes that one. Puts East ahead 60 to 39. Exactly two minutes to go in this third quarter to decide the inaugural Springhouse champion in the girls' division here in the battle for the Springhouse. We talked just a minute ago about the next step in Caden Stewart's development being playing through that contact a little bit and scoring. I think the next step in Caroline Dodson's development is just becoming just a little bit better shooter. She can shoot it, but if she comes becomes more consistent, she's really going to be a weapon. Bridgeport commits a travel top of the key. That's uh, Alan Knapp picking up the uh, turnover there. So Greenbrier East will take the ball. Kate Stewart inbounds to Allie Dumford. Back to Stewart. She pump fakes from the right wing, penetrates. Kicks out to Brooke Davis. Davis fires three from the left. She drills it. Brooke Davis in double figures. Brooke Davis likes this into the floor. Brooke Davis with 12 points. Puts Greenbrier East ahead by 24 once again. 90 seconds remaining in the third period. Trying to answer is Reap. Reap ball is short. It's out of bounds into the Greenbrier East cheerleaders. Greenbrier East will take the ball here with 125 to go in the third. 63 to 39 our score. Reap just a little too deep, I think, on that one. Stewart to Dotson, back to Stewart. Bridgeport showing full court pressure. Stewart splits through two defenders. Looking up the floor, kicks out to Dufford on the left wing. Dufford picks up her dribble. Down to Stewart. She drills a three. She's figured it out. She Jimmy. has figured out this end of the floor. Beautiful stroke from Caden Stewart from the left corner. Puts Greenbrier East up 66 to 39. Rape trying to answer. She does not as Stewart is tied up. She pulled down the rebound, but she was tied up by Bridgeport's Awen Knapp. And the alternating possession arrow will go with Bridgeport off the tie-up. Caroline, get on the other side of her. Smell inbounds up to Amick. Down to Jalen Dodd, who misses the shot. It's on the floor. Rebound by Layla Pence. Over to Caden Stewart. We're inside a minute to go in the third quarter. Stewart down to Davis. Davis with a three from left corner. She got it. Brooke Davis with 15 points. Adding to this landmark Spartan game here as Bridgeport draw, uh, draws contact going the other way. Greenbrier East leads it by 30. It's 69-39. to 39. Caden Stewart picks up the foul. I believe that may be her third. It is. And, Timmy, I don't think you can overstate the way Brooke Davis is shooting the basketball tonight, how much that could mean to the Spartan team down the stretch if she's able to do that. First shot is up and no good for Maddie Amick. Well, it just shows what we talked about at halftime. You look at this point total right now, 69 points. That's in three quarters. What can this team do? Uh, how, how dangerous is this team? You're making a run here in about – I don't know, four or five weeks. What kind of message does that send to everyone else in your section, in your region, in your class? This is second shot misses. Score remains 69-39 to 39 for Amick. Dumford over to Glover, who's checked in, down to Davis in the left corner. Davis puts the ball on the floor, then sends it up top to Dumford. Ten seconds left. Over to Glover. Seven seconds left. Five seconds left. Over to Davis. Three seconds left. She launches the shot, and she misses off the back iron as time expires in our third period. The Lady Spartans are eight minutes away from claiming that coveted Springhouse trophy. Our fourth quarter is next. This is the Battle for the Springhouse presented by Appalachian Power right here on Rock 95 in the Greenbrier Valley Channel. Stay with us. <laughs> Thank you. 
We know that our word is only as good as our energy. Not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy, and our energy is boundless. We know that our word is... Seven. Greenbrier East ahead of Bridgeport, 69-39, to 39, eight minutes to go in the ball game. Substitutions in for Greenbrier East. There's Ryan White, the birthday girl. It's a happy 15th birthday to Ryan White as she's checked in along with Kenna Shepard as Greenbrier East loses the ball out of bounds. Timmy, the only reason you know that is because you're over there eating those cupcakes. I did not touch a cupcake. I didn't either. I ate spaghetti and meatballs, but I did not eat a cupcake. Yeah, how about the – you know, when we go back on the road next week, not that there's anything wrong with yummy Japan by any means, but we're going to miss those spaghetti and meatballs and pasta and baked potato bar and everything we've had here at the Battle of the Spring House. Nice, nice move for Reap getting to the basket. Again, she is just a great basketball player. She's a junior, too. Uh, as Bridgeport continues to reload, they, they, she's going to have a tremendous impact on the state. Ryan White gets the ball, wastes no time, launching a three. That was Josie Patterson. Oh, that's Josie Patterson? Mm-hmm. I thought that was Ryan White. Got cleared up. That is Josie Patterson in the game. Still Ryan White's birthday, though. Yes, it is. There she is. Yeah. We had a discrepancy here uh, on the foul. Um, <laughs> so Kenneth the, Shepard picks up the foul. The birthday girl's going to have to sit back down, Timmy. I've got a feeling she's going to see some minutes here shortly with 7.06 remaining. Reap over to Amick, right side wing. And Amick dribbles all the way around, draws a blocking foul there uh, on the right baseline. And that's Allie Dumford picking up her fourth foul. And now we get the birthday girl. There's the birthday girl coming in. Ryan White will check in for Dumford. On the floor for the Lady Spartans, Ryan White, Kenneth Shepard, Josie Patterson, Caden Stewart, and Deja Summers. Reap with a three ball from the right corner. Again, she is a great basketball player as the lead is cut to 25 for the Lady Spartans. Another great basketball player, Caden Stewart with the ball in her hands. Dribble drives in the lane, gets a shot up, and draws contact. Stewart unable to finish the play. She'll shoot two. And that foul goes on Bridgeport's Reagan Moore. And that's just what I was talking about, Timmy, when she's not a criticism by any means of Caden Stewart, but when she can finish that play, maybe get her her dad out there with some of those football pads and beat on her a little bit on her way to the basket and see if she can learn how to how to finish those. That sounds like abuse, Cam. <laughs> no, 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 no. Stewart good at the free throw line once and twice. 71-44, to 44, Greenbrier East on top. Making a statement here in the championship game of the battle for the spring house. Reap, nice move again off the assist by Amick. 71 to 46, East on top. And if it weren't for Caden Stewart, everybody would be talking about Reap. Yeah, if it wasn't for Caden Stewart, how tight would this game be right now? Coach Justice calls out a play. Stewart dribbles to the right side, kicks to White, right corner. Cross court to Patterson, left side wing. Nice pass to Deja Summers inside. Summers unable to finish, but she scores on her own offensive rebound. Nice job by Deja Summers. Puts Greenbrier East up 73-46. to Just padding the stats a little bit there by Deja. She wanted another rebound. So. Well, how great would it be to set the single-season point total uh, record for the Lady Spartans here at the Battle for the Spring House? So, what, uh, 13 points away, Cam? Yeah, they got a little work to do, but they could get there. 5.41 to go. Josie Patterson picks up the foul. And that's going to be a one-and-one one 
for Bridgeport with 5.41 remaining. So that is seven team fouls for the Lady Spartans. And that is Jalen Dodd at the free throw line, the sophomore. Shot is up, and that won't go. Emily Anderson boxing out, gets the rebound, misses, gets her own rebound, misses the putback, and the ball is loose. It's knocked out of bounds, and Greenbrier East will take possession with 5.35 remaining. Remind our listeners uh, and our viewers here to stay tuned at the end of the game as uh, the trophy presentation will take place here on the court and also award a scholarship to a player on each team, a $500 scholarship and a $500 scholarship to one of the Green Berets cheerleaders. All that to come here on the Cornerstone IGA postgame show as Green East loses the ball out of bounds. It's deflected out, however, by Bridgeport, so the Lady Spartans get to run a patented Coach Jim Justice inbounds play. That's one of the neat things about this tournament, Timmy, those scholarships and the smile on these girls' faces when they receive them. White's inbounds pass is... Picked off and stolen by Amick. Amick driving the length of the floor. Ball's poked loose from behind by Ryan White. Nice move. She's able to swing the ball out to Summers. Summers on a fast break. It's a two-on-one over to Shepard. Back to Summers. Out to Patterson. She fires a three. She misses. Shepard up and in on the putback. Give Kenna Shepard two. It's 75-46. to 46. Inside five minutes to go in the championship game of the battle for the spring house. And here's Reap getting a shot up. I believe that's an offensive foul. No, it is an offensive foul, but the, it was not on Gabby Reap. Um, it was away from the ball, moving screen, I believe, on Reagan Moore. Correct. Oh, <laughs> you are correct, sir. Josie Patterson inbounds to Kate Stewart inside the five-minute mark of our fourth and final quarter of what has been a phenomenal first-ever battle for the Springhouse. Kate Stewart picks up her dribble, swings over to the left side, wing to Kenneth Shepard. Cross court to Josie Patterson. Patterson looks at the bucket into the right corner. Nobody was there. I think she threw that to Brooke Davis on the bench maybe down there. Uh, <laughs> she may have been trying to throw the ball to Baby Dog, as uh, Coach Justice indicated. I mean, Baby Dog was in the vicinity. It would not have been intentional grounding. <laughs> Regardless, Bridgeport takes over, and Knapp goes down hard. Hope she's all right there. Get Shepard her second foul. I'll tell you what, Timmy. Ken Shepard, Brooke Davis, Caroline Dodson, they get their money's worth when they get in the game. They're going to foul. They're going to get the good out of it. So I told you months and months ago that Shepard was tougher than a $2 steak. I don't think you find any of those here at America's Resort. He's certainly not the Greenbrier. Maybe down the road, but not here as Knapp makes the free throw. She'll shoot again. 75-47 to 47 our score. Kenneth Shepard comes out. She's got two points and a foul. Harley Patterson checks in. A.O. and Knapp at the free throw line. She drills it. Nice trip to the line for Knapp. Deja moving quickly with the ball. Bounce pass over to Ryan White. White down to, to Stewart. Stewart unable to hold on to the pass. It was a bit high as Bridgeport comes away with the steal. Reap. A three ball into the cheerleading section inside the four-minute mark. And last time Ryan White touched the ball, Timmy, the entire Green Bar East bench standing up on the floor. They want to see the birthday girl come away with some points. Ball inbounded to Marley Patterson, who's checked in. Back to Aubrey Glover. Over to Kane Stewart, who will break the timeline over the Springhouse logo. Into the half circle is Stewart. She penetrates, gets a shot up, and loses the ball out of bounds. They're going to say, uh, I guess it was off her knee. It's going to turn over to Bridgeport. Yep, no foul called there. I don't think there was a foul. It sounded like a lot of ball, but uh, I, I didn't see it hit off a of cadence, but I guess it did. I've got to say, we've had a different officiating crew for every single game, but you have to commend the all of the officials that have uh, done all eight of these games. What a clean 
uh, eight, all eight games have been clean, well run, well officiated games. Even the one that can read lips did a nice job. I'm <laughs> yeah, glad he didn't have our game, thank goodness. <laughs> Here's Anderson with the ball. Right elbow, she throws up a runner too strong. Aubrey Glover with the rebound, and she's mauled from behind. I believe that's going to be uh, Bridgeport's Jalen Dodd. It sure is. And so Greenbrier East will take possession here with 3.21 to go in the ballgame. Aubrey Glover inbounds to Marley Patterson. Bridgeport showing pressure here. Up to Deja Summers who breaks the timeline on the far side left. Into the lane, kick out to Ryan White. <laughs> up top to Stewart. Can't even see Ryan White because the bench gets so excited when yeah, she touches it. Yeah, but we it. know where it's going. Over to Deja Summers, spin around, nice move, and, St- and Summers finishes. 77 to 48. Inside of three minutes to go here in the inaugural Battle for the Spring House, presented by Appalachian Power. Here's Amick dribbling in, kicking out to Anderson. Anderson misses off the front iron, rebound Reap. Reap pulls the ball up top. East showing a 2 3 zone here. Reap sends the ball over to Amick. She fakes a shot up top again to Reap. Two and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Reap. Bounce passes inside to Knapp. Kick out to Anderson. Three ball is up. Misses left. Deja with the rebound. Deja sprinting up the floor. And the ball is poked loose by Reap into the hands of Caden Stewart. And Coach Justice wants a timeout. Will he? Oh, man. He wanted timeout right as... Ryan White was going to get the shot off. We'll take it with him. 2.08 to go in the game. East ahead, 77-48 to 48 over Bridgeport. Our uh, conclusion of this one is up next. This is the Battle for the Spring House here on Rock 95 WRLB and the Greenbrier Valley Channel. Stay with us. More to come. Only as good as our energy not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy and our energy is boundless. Fifteen. Six. Fort drove quickly, and Gabby Reap got to the free throw line. She scored the bucket. Counted the basket off the foul by Ryan White, and here is Gabby Reap having an opportunity at a three-point play here with 2.04 remaining in the ballgame. And that's a three-point play the old-fashioned way for Gabby Reap. She has 10 in this quarter. Abigail Mathis in, along with Greenbrier East's Olivia Burdett. Here's White over the timeline into the front court. Over to Marley Patterson. Patterson launches a three, and she drills it. 80-51. to 51. The Lady Spartans only six points, t- six points shy of tying their high point total for the season. Still two minutes left to play. And, Timmy, no offense to Bluefield, but this Bridgeport team, a much better team than Bluefield was that Green Bay scored that 86 against, so... Uh, Impressive performance against a, uh, a, a solid opponent. It's a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it here. You know, and it, I want to say this now this has been a drubbing, and we're Greenbrier East guys. You know, we know where our bread is buttered. This is nothing against Greenbrier East. They, they've had a phenomenal basketball game. Bridgeport's not a bad team. No, not at all. We, we've seen some bad teams. Like, we, we've uh, we whipped up on some teams, and we're certainly whipping up on Bridgeport, uh, we being Greenbrier East, but. Uh, I mean, not the most talented team he's had before, but Herman Pierce has got a pretty decent team. I mean, they they could make a, some noise when they get into the section around. 
Yeah, we see they've certainly got a special player in Gabby Reap, and uh, she's shown that tonight. And you know, she did. This is a good Greenbrier East team too, and she's she put up a quite a performance against the ladies' Spartans. I mean, what can you say about Greenbrier East? Eighty points tonight uh, in a big time game here with the ninety second mark as Bridgeport throws the ball away. It's stolen by Marley Patterson. Patterson breaks the timeline, kicks out to Glover. Glover with a three. In and out. Mathis gets the rebound offensively. She throws the ball out, though. It's stolen by Bridgeport. Here's Bridgeport's Kaylee Oval. She walked with it. Who travels. So East will take possession here once again. The Lady Spartans will improve to 12-4 and four on the season as Aubrey Glover gets a shot up, misses, but over to Abby Mathis, who scores on the offensive rebound and the putback. And here's Bridgeport now. Chloe Martinez stepped, stepped on, the, on line. the line. Okay, let's go, girls. Let's go. So as Coach Justice said, let's go. With 49.3 seconds left, the Lady Spartans are going to claim the first ever Springhouse Trophy here in the inaugural battle for the Springhouse is Aubrey Glover inbounds to Marley Patterson. Patterson dribbles in and travels. Shuffled with the shoe shine there as Bridgeport will take possession here. 44 seconds left. Here's Bridgeport with the ball with 21 seconds left. Kaylee Oval over the left side. Dribble drive shot is up, won't go. And here's Glover with it with 30 seconds left. Glover loses a handle on the ball. Out of bounds. The Lady Spartans will retain possession here. With 26 seconds left, Aubrey Glover to inbound. She does that to Ryan White. White in the right corner. They, the teammates want her to shoot so bad. She was left wide open and didn't take the shot. And Aubrey Glover is going to be fouled. Can hear the can hear the Greenbrier East cheerleaders rooting on Greenbrier East. A great crowd on hand here to see the first ever girls championship of the battle for the Springhouse. Inbound to Marley Patterson, up top to Ryan White, down to Aubrey Glover. She gets a shot up, and I think we get a legal screen, maybe gets Marley Patterson. Yeah, it is indeed the case, Camelton. Bridgeport ball with 19 seconds to go. Into Bridgeport. Got to run the clock there with 19 seconds left. Kaylee Alva with the ball. Left side to Chloe Martinez. Martinez dribbles around. Patterson guarding her tightly. Up top once again. Shot is up for Abel. She misses the three-pointer. Ball is up again, and that misses as well, and that will do it. Greenbrier East claims the first-ever Springhouse Trophy here in the first-ever battle for the Springhouse here at the Greenbrier. The Lady Spartans improve to 12-4 and four on the season with a 82-51 to 51 victory over the Bridgeport Lady Indians. Bridgeport will drop to 6-9 and nine on the 2021-22 campaign. Take a break. Come back. We'll break it all down with award ceremonies and more. Cam is even going to try to get a word with Greenbrier's head coach, Jim Justice. Plenty more to come. This is the Cornerstone IGA postgame show here on Rock 95 and the Greenbrier Valley Channel. We know that our word is only as good as our energy. Not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy, and our energy is boundless. Scholarship Award to Bridgeport's 
Number 34, are you in that? We're back here. This is the award ceremony as Bridgeport's Awen Knapp has been awarded a scholarship of uh, $500, I believe, uh, signifying her play. And that really goes to show what this whole tournament is all about as uh, it's been a just a phenomenal once-in-a-lifetime experience for these players. And really, Shinneberry gets the scholarship for the Greenbrier East Lady Spartans. You absolutely love to see it. And just what a smile on her face. As Bridgeport comes in to uh, second place here in the uh, battle for the spring house, the Lady Spartans of Greenbrier East. Will Claim the inaugural Springhouse Trophy as the cheerleader for the Lady Spartans has been awarded a scholarship as well. That is uh, what is done here is a player and cheerleader from each participating school is awarded a scholarship. And we will see the awards coming up here. These will be the team awards. These medals will be given to the Lady Indians of Bridgeport. Sponsored by Appalachian Power, as uh, public address announcer Gary Aid has said. And Bridgeport takes the floor. They battled hard, earned an opportunity to play for the championship with an impressive victory over the Lady Bulldogs of Martinsburg yesterday afternoon. They just ran into an absolute buzzsaw in the form of the Greenbrier East Lady Spartans tonight falling 82 to 51 here in the championship game of the inaugural battle for the spring house as Bridgeport will line up to take a team photo from uh, Greenbrier Photography's own Mike Wyatt, one of the finest photographers there is of any kind of uh, atmosphere, formal, athletic, informal, otherwise. Tournament director Holly Jo Gillespie out uh, directing traffic as uh, she gets everything lined up. She has done just an absolutely incredible job, her and the entire team, here at the Greenbrier. This has been, you expect first class when you come to the Greenbrier, but for such a unique setting such as this, you, uh, you don't know what to expect, quite frankly, for a first-time event such as this, but... Uh, magnitude to which this has been pulled off it's been absolutely amazing and kudos again to her and her team and it's time now for the Greenbrier East Lady Spartans to take the floor and accept their we spring house trophy the girls tournament winner the Greenbrier East Lady Spartans and the Lady Spartans take the floor and they've got baby dog with them <laughs> a reluctant baby dog out on the floor as Greenbrier East celebrates with that beautiful Springhouse trophy. Baby dog's trying to get away, get back to the governor. Everyone's just got such a huge smile on their face. Baby dog's going to be in the team photo along with the Springhouse trophy. They're putting their medals on, they being the Lady Spartans. Here in just a second, we will turn things over to Cam Huffman, who's going to have an interview with Coach Jim Justice as Greenbrier East earns its 12th victory of the 2021-22 campaign with an 82-51 championship victory over Bridgeport. And so now we are going to uh, turn things over. Looks like Cam Huffman is going to uh, grab an interview with Greenbrier's head coach, Jim Justice. And we'll send things over to Cam right now.
Coach Justice is uh, stopping the team here. He's going to have the whole team while... Uh, it's like uh, Coach Justice wants to get out on the floor and I think he's going to take a photo with the team as well. Coach Justice will be in the shot with the team and with Baby Dog and the Springhouse Trophy. Kenneth Shepard with the honors there to uh, hold tight of Baby Dog. I get the team all coordinated here. Everyone and their brother certainly wants a photo of the champions of the inaugural Battle for the Spring House, sponsored by Appalachian Power. You know, while we have a moment, just want to thank Appalachian Power and the health plan and Blackhawk Mining and just the myriad of sponsors that have stepped up and made this tournament possible from the standpoint of the Greenbrier. Now, Coach Jim Justice uh, talked about it early on, uh, about how this tournament would not have come off to the magnitude that it did were it not for the sponsorship participation. So we certainly want to thank them. We certainly also want to thank our sponsors on the radio side of things that uh, work with us here at Radio Greenbrier and make it possible for us to bring you every girls basketball game on the calendar as Greenbrier East uh, certainly promises to have a uh, momentous season. They are at 12 and 4 right now. <laughs> And we'll turn things over to Cam Huffman. He's with head coach Jim Justice. Well, coach, I guess uh, sum it all up. Let's go back a few days. You're, you're addressing your team on this floor when you have your first uh, shoot around. And, and I know uh, you, you were, you're pretty harsh on them. You, you, you wanted to see more out of them. And you, I guess you couldn't really ask for anything more than what you got out of this tournament in two games. Oh, that's right, Cam. I mean, we played a nice game last night. And tonight, uh, 51 points at halftime. You know, really, truly, almost uh, – almost doubling their rebounds or steals their assists and everything. You know, half the turnover, we had eight and they had 17. I mean, really and truly, uh, we played a nice basketball game tonight. And, and, you know, I'm real proud of the kids and everything for bouncing back. I mean, you know, granted, I was probably pretty tough on it, but I'm not going to be, I hate to say it, but I'm not going to be a rec ball coach. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I've got a, a real obligation to this community and this school, and I take it seriously. And, and as, as I do with the governor or anything I do in my life, and that's, that's what I was taught. My dad always said, listen, I don't care what you do in life and everything, son, but ditch digger, no matter what it may be, be the best. And that's what I try to be. Speaking of being the best, this tournament uh, doesn't have an MVP award, but if it did, it would certainly have to go to Caden Stewart. 30 yeah. points last night, follows that up with 31 tonight. Just yeah. incredible performance. Double down, incredible performance both nights. And, uh, you know, she played really, really hard both times and, and shot the ball phenomenally and a uh, real special player and everything. Don't want to take anything away from any of the other kids and everything, but but Caden's really uh, all-world in this. Yeah, you, you mentioned some of those other kids, and Deja, she'd struggled offensively a couple games in a row, but she comes in tonight, scores 21 points, and she's 8 of 16 from the field, so that, that makes you a whole lot better basketball team when she's playing like that. Amen. You know, it's, you know, it's, there's times when she's been uh, – Good gracious, she's been, you know, five for 24, you know, but, but eight of 16, phenomenal, you know, uh, beautiful three she made right down here. They went to a 1-3-1. One, one. You know, I, I'll never forget this. The, 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 deep, the offense you go to is a 2-1-2. Two, two. Split the person out front, split the person in the back. But really and truly, there's an offense that you can do that I got from John Beeline, of all things, and it's a shooter offense. So we put four shooters in the game. You put them on the wing, the, the corner, wing, corner, and everything, and don't let them move. Don't let them move. They have to stay there and everything. And, and there's no way a 1-3-1 one, one can defend that. You just pass the ball around until somebody's wide open and bust them up, and, and that's what we did. I mean, really and truly. We got the three out of Deja from the corner. We got threes from Cadence right here. We got two from Brooke on the other side. You know, it, it really uh, – it, it really is pretty to see him being able to do it. And I didn't even tell him about it until halftime. And so, so it's really good. We've done it in a lot in the past with the boys' team, but uh, Coach Gordon and I have done that way in the past, but uh, a long time ago. You mentioned those two threes from Brooke, and she, she hit another one along with that, finishes with 15 points. And Timmy and I were saying on the air, you know, her, her all, she's always had plays great defense. She always hustles, plays hard. But if it hurt, when her offense game comes around, that makes you a tremendously better basketball team. Oh, yeah. for, for absolute certain. Like I said, she's, 
it's a constant ball of hustle all the time, and you can't, you can't, you, you know, it's really important on the team and everything. You know, it's all about, you know, a shot, a rebound, a pass, and on and on and on. But she, uh, when she's hitting her shots and everything, it really, really big time does. Before we get out of here, we have to touch on this tournament as a whole. The, the first battle for the spring house here at the Greenbrier in basketball inside Colonial Hall for the first time. What a special two days it was. Some fantastic basketball. As you said in the pregame, so many smiles around. Everybody's happy. Uh, you couldn't have asked for a better event overall. No, there's just no way. I mean, really and truly, it, it caught me off guard. I mean, just to tell you the truth, uh, I give a lot, a lot of credit to Jill and Holly. You know, they did phenomenal work. And, you know, lots and lots and lots of folks here that did unbelievable work. I saw it for the first time, the, 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 I guess, the, the day before we played, you know. And, uh, and, and it, it was amazing. And, and, you know, you hear just person after person after person talking about, you know, all the goodness about it and everything from the standpoint of kids being able to come here and, experience maybe one once of a lifetime deal and everything it, it was and be really meaningful to them so uh so really true is great and i really really applaud the green bar staff and all the people there that that embraced everybody and everything it's really good and all the people here it's really really neat stuff and no better way to end it than a baby dog getting the trophy at midcourt yeah, right? i love it that's <laughs> for sure i thought josie when she threw this pass down here baby dog was sitting in a chair i said josie well, you're throwing it to Baby Dog. Like she came over here after the game. She said, I was throwing it to Baby Dog. <laughs> you know, but nevertheless, uh, great night for these kids and something they'll remember forever. Well, congratulations on a big win and a big, great tournament overall. Well, Cam, thank you and thank everybody that made this real thing this happen. I just kind of waddled along behind and a lot of people did the work and uh, great work. Great work from, from everybody. All right, we'll come back and wrap things up and uh, get out of here for the final time in the battle for the spring house. You're watching on Greenbrier Valley t Television and listening on Rock 95. Oh, know that our word is only as good as our energy. Not just cleaner, greener energy in the future, but reliable and safe energy now. Our word is a pledge to our communities to always keep your best interests in mind in this generation and the next. Our word is our energy, and our energy is boundless. It's good to have options when choosing health coverage for yourself, for your family, or for your employees. And you've got options with the health plan. Known for exceptional service and support with a nationwide network of physicians, flexible coverage options you can count on, and competitive rates you'll appreciate. The health plan. Plan on it. Learn more at healthplan.org. Since 1778, Guests have come to these mountains to find beauty, relaxation, entertainment, and golf. Many have even chosen to call the Greenbrier home. With championship courses, culinary creations for every palate, and America's only private casino, the Greenbrier's legacy lives on. Plan your visit and experience why life at America's resort is life as few know it. Greenbrier East has won the inaugural Battle for the Springhouse Girls Championship by final score 82 to 51 
over the Bridgeport Lady Indians. And Cam, when when you score eighty two points, a lot of t- a lot of players are having a really good game. So don't envy your position of having to name tonight's Magic's Computer Repair Player of the Game. Nonetheless, I must put you on the spot. Well, how can you go with anybody else? It's got to be Baby Dog, right? <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's give it to Caden Stewart tonight. As uh, as I told Coach Justice there in that interview, if, if there's an MVP for a tournament, no doubt who it would be. As she gets 30 last night, follows it up with 31 tonight. She's 10 of 18 from the field tonight, 6 of 11 from three-point range, 5 of 6 at the foul line, had five rebounds, 31 points, three assists, three steals. So what a game, what a tournament for Caden Stewart. No question about it, Cam. And, I mean, what a tournament overall for the Greenbrier East Lady Spartans. They come into this game kind of hanging their heads a little bit, so to speak, you know, off of a uh, what was a uh, – don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but uh, paraphrasing anything we've heard from Coach Justice, just an absolutely abhorrent loss this past Monday night at the hands of Woodrow Wilson. But what a way to bounce back. Two great victories over two quality opponents – uh, Nitro last night, and then Bridgeport tonight in the fashion in which it was done. What a way to cap off the first ever battle for the Springhouse. The home team, so to speak, gets to walk out here with the Springhouse trophy well deserved. Yeah, absolutely was. And it, it took, you know, great, what a performance by Caden Stewart, as we said, but it took a team effort, and they got that tonight. 15 points, 8 rebounds from Brooke Davis. Uh, if she would have played more at the end of the game, she probably would have had that double double. But uh, great performance all the way around. She has two steals as well uh, to go along with those 15 points and eight rebounds. And then Deja Summers, 21 points. But more than the 21 points, we've seen her score that kind of, uh, of, of point production earlier in the season, Timmy, but it came on a ton of shots a lot of the time. So much more efficient tonight. If she's 8 of 16 overall, 1 of 2 from 3, 4 of 4 at the line, grabs, it scores 21 points, grabs two rebounds, has a block shot and, and a team best six steals. So really a... A much more complete performance from uh, Deja Summers tonight. And then uh, a lot of other contrib- contributors in there as well. Allie Dunford scored just two points, but she had seven assists and two steals. Looking down the, uh, on down the line, Marley Patterson hit a three. Caroline Dawson had four points and a couple of assists. Two points for um, Abby Mathis, two for Kenneth Shepard, and two for Liz Wooding. And uh, don't forget Lily Shinneberry, who played just a minute and 16 seconds, but it gets the scholarship award here tonight for Greenbury. So, uh, a great performance overall for for everyone, and then looking at the other side for Bridgeport as they fall for to six and nine, they finish up nineteen of forty six uh, on the game, forty one percent, not bad shooting. But Greenbury shoots nearly twenty more shots than in Bridgeport because of those twenty six Bridgeport turnovers. But what a game from Gabby Reap, twenty six points, four rebounds, four six, four assists, a block shot, and a steal. So uh, she would have maybe been next in line for MVP if uh, if it wasn't for Caden Stewart. Well, uh, it, 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 it's hard to hard to choose, but uh, certainly Bridgeport a heck of a team. But you know, we we wrap up this first ever battle for the Springhouse, and you know what can we say that hasn't already be, been said? But I just want to relay the point one more time: the job that has been done by the Greenbrier staff here from conception to execution. This has been one of the finest events uh, that has been put on in basketball in the state of West Virginia. So uh, just thrilled to have the opportunity to be a part of it. I mean, top to bottom, first class, um, just uh, aesthetically, um, the way it looked in here, the community support, the sponsor support, uh, the quality of basketball that we put on the on the court, the video stream that be, we've been able to bring to these, uh, to bring to the fans out there, all throughout the the last couple of days, and the having the sponsorship o- slideshow. I mean, how- I mean, having the opportunity to uh, <laughs> present all these games uh, in radio and or video. Uh, it's it's just been a first class operation, and cannot say enough good things about the folks that put it together. Yeah, it really is from uh, from start to finish, and uh, it's just been. Uh, everything uh no i was going to say it's been everything we expected but it was so much more than we expected is it, it was just such a fantastic event and as we said several times just the beginning as, as i think there's even uh bigger and better things on the way for this tournament as we move on down the line absolutely we put a bow on this one we thank you so much for being with us over the last two days from uh, Joe Sharp and uh, Darren and the uh, Greenbrier Valley Channel team all the way down to you know, all the way over to Poncho Church, our uh, studio engineer on the radio side, 
And big thanks to Steve Webb, who's been our statistician for all eight games here. Uh, but just a complete total team effort, and we thank you, the fans, so much for being with us along the way. Yeah, and I, I would really encourage people, if they enjoyed our broadcast, get on the Facebook page, go on one of the games and, and comment, and let us know where you watch from and, and what you thought about the coverage because uh, I thought it was a fantastic job, and uh, the, the, this team deserves a lot of credit for it. Indeed they do, and, and the bottom line is Greenbrier East is your girls' battle for the Springhouse inaugural champion. For Cam Huffman, Poncho Church, Steve Webb, and all of us at Radio Greenbrier and Greenbrier Video Sports, this is Timmy Gwynn saying good night from America's Resort, the Greenbrier.